Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. For this video, we will be breaking down this Night of Sight VFX I made a while back. I know, I know, this video is a bit late, but you gotta understand, the company's budget has been way down. A couple of notes before we start. Number one, this project is finally on the stable Godot 4.2 release, which is awesome. Number two, like the previous breakdown, I won't go through every value I have for particles and shaders, but rather, I'll just explain the main behavior of each component. And number three, most of the shader techniques here are explained in my previous videos about shaders, so I recommend you check those out first. So without further ado, let's begin! Starting with our main effect, the slash. This slash is made up of four layers arbitrarily named the edge, the highlight, the base, and the distortion. Let's focus on one, two, and three first because they are all done in the same shader. Each layer has these three behaviors. Number one, X offset. Our layer's texture moves along our slash mesh from one point to another based on a curve along its lifetime. Make sure that our texture doesn't repeat though. Number two, Color Ramp. This is just the gradient that our layer samples as its color along its lifetime. And number three, Erosion. Our layer erodes based on a curve, again, along its lifetime. And we have most of our slash. The layer shape is determined by this packed texture where the R, G, and B channels represent layers 1, 2, and 3 respectively. But how do we combine all these layers in the shader? For color, I added half of each layer's own color. Can't really tell you why, as this part was just vibes for me. The alpha is determined by the grayscale value of the overall color. With 1, 2, and 3 out of the way, we can focus on 4. And this layer is a little special. Let's hop onto the shader. For this layer, we need to sample whatever is on the screen. To do that in Godot, we have to add the hint screen texture keyword for our sampler 2D. And to sample this screen texture, we can't use just any old UV, we use the screen UV for that. Coupled with some distortion, whose intensity is sampled on a curve along its lifetime, this layer is done. And our overall slash shader is done. To finish things up, we give our slash a little bit of rotation towards the direction our shader is moving. Up next, our circular slash shader. This one is actually a simpler version of our slash. No erosions or color ramp. We just set our texture to tile twice horizontally and we add an offset speed like so and we have our circular slash. This just appears and disappears instantly when the scythe rotates. We can move on to the hit effect which is made up of four parts as well. The flare, the streak, the veil, and the spark. The flare is just a billboarded additive texture that scales up and down very quickly. The streak is also an additive texture that scales up and moves towards the direction of the slash, but isn't billboarded. It also fades and erodes over time. The veil is a bit more complicated than the previous two. It takes on a hemisphere, and the shader and texture is as follows. The red channel is our line that goes around the mesh. The green channel is our distortion that pans from the center towards the edge of our mesh. And the blue channel is our alpha multiplier so that our effect is transparent towards the center. We also have some depth fade so it blends better with the background. And lastly, the sparks are again just billboarded additive textures. These sparks spawn in a small sphere with a random rotation and speed. The speed's pivot is slightly offset so they go towards the direction. If our pivot is at zero, the sparks would burst outwards in all directions from the center. And finally, let's talk about our biggest boy, the banana. This effect is made in a single shader. Let's take a look at the texture first. Our texture is channel packed with the main shape in the red channel, the mask in the green channel, and the padding trail in the blue channel. Hopping onto the shader, we have our texture sample for our main effect and alpha, and another sample with offset speed for our noise. We store a temporary color variable where we take the color of our noise wherever the red channel is zero. And then we lerp from a defined dark and light color based on this temporary variable. 
The alpha is then our temporary variable's R channel, which is basically the main shape plus the noise, multiplied by the green channel which fades out towards the end. The process material is just a very large velocity going right. But this banana wouldn't be complete without the dust trail it leaves. These use the same sparks texture from the hit effect. The particle process material for this is kinda cheaty. I just spawn all of the dust in a large box near where the banana spawns. And they all have a velocity towards the banana direction with a large min and max range to cover most of the path. And that's it for the breakdown of this effect. I hope this video helped you out one way or another. If you like this breakdown, then that's awesome. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or suggestions. As usual, a zip file of this project is available in my Patreon, link below, including the scythe, which is made by a good friend of mine, Mel. Please go check her stuff out, they're absolutely wonderful. Before we end, I just want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Daniel Oaks, Justin Hurst, Sigit Satria P, Adam, and this guy. I really appreciate everyone's support, however shape or form you might give it. Thank you so much. And thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.